Hello everybody, my name is Alisa Ibendiz and my presentation today is about teaching English as a foreign language in Bolivian schools. So, uh, teaching English as a foreign language in Bolivian schools has passed through three stages. In the 70s and 80s, teaching English uh, was a required course in the schools and it was based on the, on the structural approach where the teaching methodology based on teaching grammar as a set of rules and teaching reading allowed. And the classroom activities were based on the uh, oral grounds uh, for imitations and uh, for imitations to memorize vocabularies. And the second stage was in uh, second stage was in 1986 where this uh, teaching English as a second uh, as a foreign language in the Libyan schools was suspended from schools for political reasons. So from 1986 to, 90, to 2001, in this stage, schools in, the, in Libya were, were uh, forbidden from teaching English as a school uh, subject. And the third stage is where in 2002, when English really introduced again to the schools, through new curricula, new uh, teaching methodology approach. So, the course really introduced again to the school in the, in the primary stage, in the middle stage, and in the secondary stage, as a preparation for the university. And if you can see here, this is the uh, Libya, the structure, the description of the educational system in Libya. There are three stages here, the primary, middle and the high. The primary stage, uh, there are six years, in the middle stage, there are three years, in the high school, there are three years. So, so English is introduced here, where the students are supposed to uh, to study six to study English for six years as a preparation for the university. So at this stage, uh, English is not only being introduced as a new uh, again to the schools, but also they adopted a new methodology for the curriculum design and teaching uh, and teaching in the classroom. So the new curriculum design is based on what? The new curriculum design is based on content-based approach and it applies the communicative review where the teaching methodology uh, applies for integrating the four skills and teaching grammar and vocabulary is uh, done by integrating uh, by teaching the four skills. So uh, the current curriculum is introduced uh, to Libya through the curricula entitled uh, English for Libya and it's a serious uh, at the, it's a serious use at the middle and in the secondary stage. The serious is designed uh, using the same structure and layout for middle and secondary stages. Each level has eight units and each unit has the following sections. There is a part dedicated to reading, and there is part for vocabulary and grammar, and there is part for functional uh, use of language, and there is part for listening, part for speaking, another part for writing, and the last part which is for specializations, it's related to the uh, specializations for uh, economics, uh, engineering, and uh, life science. Uh, the following is the course summary which is uh, introduced in the uh, beginning of each course book and you will find that all the four skills reading, writing, speaking, listening are uh, introduced using the same goals except for the last stage 
with this, uh, this specialized section with it. And in the specialized section, students are supposed to have specific goals, we can say academic goals. So they have uh, for the life science, they have goals for knowing the animal kingdom. For the engineering, they have uh, goals for knowing the telecommunications. For economics, they have goals for knowing how to negotiate for the good price. Uh, for example, uh, this is this is the reading. We have two lessons: vocabulary and grammar. And here we have speaking, writing, listening, and speaking. And the last part, which is the specializations. Uh, challenges of applying the current curriculum. There is a considerable research that discusses various aspects of how teaching English has been taught in Libya and this research has been done for two reasons. The first thing which is to screen the challenges that are facing teachers in the Libyan schools and the second thing which is to help teachers achieve all object objectives stated by curriculum designers. So the curriculum designer state the following objectives which is to extend students' ability to acquire the English skill through integrating uh, reading, writing, and speaking, and to enrich students' vocabulary through specialized material presented in each specialized unit. Most of the recent studies focused on the attitude teachers believe teachers' instruction in implementing the current curriculum. The studies focused on what is expected from the teachers in the Libyan context without questioning the current curriculum, the coursework, the workbook, and the teacher's book. From my experience in the Libyan schools, teachers in the Libyan context are not only facing the problem of teaching English in a foreign language as a foreign language. But also, they are overwhelmed by what is expected from them. The curricular designers set different goals and they apply different activities to achieve these goals. So, most of the most of the classroom activities are a repetition for the same goal for achieving the same goal. So the teachers are overwhelmed by uh, by finding by finding themselves that they are required to achieve or they are required to follow all the activity. This is the rule there in the school. The second thing, which is the actual time, is forty five minutes for the classroom. So for the English. Classroom in the Libyan schools is for it's forty uh, it's forty five minutes three or five or four times a week. So there is no available time to achieve all these goals and all these activities with thirty students. And this is the minimum number of the students. And although the government provides workshops, professional development. The programs focus on how teachers should stick to the units organized by following the teacher's uh, book because the students are required to take standardized sets at the end of the year. So, even if the teachers are having these uh, workshops for professional development, but they find themselves in a stage where they are not free to create their own activities and tasks, which is part of the teacher's curriculum, because they are abided by using the teacher's book. One, the rationale for this is that the students are required to take the standardized exams at the end of the year. So most of the workshops are focusing on the same idea, which is following one guideline. For example, unit one is, is for economics. 
If you can see here, this is reading, this is vocabulary, grammar, speaking, writing. For reading, there are two lessons, for vocabulary three lessons, for grammar three lessons, for speaking one lesson, for writing one lesson, for listening one lesson, and for specialization four lessons. We can say uh, we have near 15 lessons for just one grade. So this is not uh, easy for, for the teacher to achieve 15 or 16 lessons for just one unit for just in one classroom which is uh, 45 minutes and this class uh, could be two or three times a week so here there is a pressure on, this, on the teachers to achieve all these goals and activities uh, from my observations of many teachers in the Libyan schools during my work in the Faculty of Education here you know, teachers are, are stressed because they lack the uh, area of developing the, uh, their own curriculum and tasks so they find themselves that they are binded by the textbooks and they are binded by what is supposed to be done and all these are uh, uh, we can say are developed in advance they are not related to real classrooms and what is going on in the classroom. We can say the number of the students and the pressure of the time and even on the level of the student. So we can say that the course books uh, set high expectations. We can say they are not, uh, they do not match the real classroom in the schools.